What's up everyone? I'm C.T. Reese and today I'm checking out the newest movie to hit Shudder. It's called Daddy's Head. Now this one comes from writer-director Benjamin Barfoot. It's his second feature and the letterbox description says here, a boy and his stepmother fear for their safety after an eerie creature resembling the boy's recently deceased father visits them. Now I did check out the trailer on this one as well. Looks like we're going to have a lot of atmosphere going on here also noticed the dog running around i don't have high hopes for the dog but it does look like it's an idea that can work really well for horror i think anytime you take folks that are already dealing with a very trying and difficult situation and then you add in this supernatural horror on top of it it can make for a very good movie so uh, i'm not familiar with benjamin barfoot's previous effort it's called double date came out in 2017 so i don't really have much idea what to go on here. I guess you could say I'm cautiously optimistic that this will be a good one. Again, the premise seems like it can work really well for horror. It's really just gonna be about the execution here. And I think a lot of this movie is probably gonna hinge on this creature and what the design is like. And we'll see how much the filmmaker decides to show us of this mysterious creature featuring, well, this child's daddy's head. Anyways, I'm gonna check this one out. I'll meet you back in my horror corner in just a few seconds and let you know what I thought of it. You need to say goodbye. Well, buckle in everyone, cause this is not gonna be a very positive review. Unfortunately, there was very little, if anything, in Daddy's Head that worked for me beyond an intriguing title. Now, seemingly, Daddy's Head is about grief and dealing with that grief. And it's definitely true that after losing someone close to you, you can sort of start seeing them everywhere. You start to see things that remind you of that person all over the place. So I think the premise was really cool where you've got this creature that literally has the face of this child's recently deceased father. So before I get into all of the things that didn't work for me with this movie, I do want to at least touch on some of the positives here. I think Daddy's Head did a good job early on setting up the atmosphere and the mystery. The sound design was on point. I'd say there were even a couple of startling moments, particularly in the first half of this movie. And while I did not like the characters really at all themselves, I think the actors here did a pretty good job considering the material they were given. I also think the creature design here was a unique twist on a mimic type creature. And I think the filmmaker did a good job of showing us just enough of that creature so we can kind of see what it looks like, but not so much that it's overexposed. And I do think the concept where this creature can partially mimic others and exploiting a child's grief is a really good one. There's a lot of potential there. I guess I'm just frustrated with this movie because I feel like it just wasted this very promising concept. Now, getting into the things that didn't work for me in Daddy's Head, well, there are many. The characters here, they're just very unlikable. And yes, I'm even including the kid in that. Now, the stepmom, Laura, she has few, if any, redeeming qualities throughout the entire film's runtime. She literally spends most of the movie drunk, and at no point does she act like a responsible adult. Now, I know this is an exploration of grief, but when you're put in charge of a child and strange things start happening, continuing to just get blackout drunk every night, it's gonna make me dislike your character intensely. And then you have her stepson, Isaac, he looks to be around middle school age. And again, I understand this is a time of grief, but a lot of the story hinges on Isaac's sort of inability to understand death, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So yeah, the situation, it's obviously terrible. I just don't really buy the fact that this kid doesn't seem to understand that his father's dead. Now, Daddy's Head is also a movie that for me was just a plod to get through. It's got a 97 minute runtime. It felt longer than that to me. I'd call it a slow burn, but I don't know if there's enough of a payoff in this one to warrant that designation. Now, I felt like I spent a solid third of the movie either watching Isaac with his face in a video game or watching Laura get sad wine drunk until she passed out again. And while I'm actually kind of a fan of this recent trend where we get the drone shots flying over a forested area, this film even overdoes that for me. It just seems to be filling time at certain points. Now, I do also have some more specific criticisms I'd like to get into, but of course that's gonna require talking about spoilers. So 
I'm giving you your warning right now. If you are looking to check out Daddy Said First, you can find it on Shudder. As always, I included links in the description to help you find it as well. So let's get into it. Let's talk about that creature. Cool design, interesting concept, maybe a little too much mystery. I think there's some clues here that point to this thing being an alien. Specifically, we've got this fire billowing out smoke from somewhere deep in the forest. And then later on, the creature actually tells Isaac that he's not supposed to be there. So I think the fire, that could be a crash landing of a UFO. Beyond that, I don't really know. The motivations of the creature, they're never clarified either. We know this creature wants to remain hidden from the adults. It wants Isaac to follow him into this structure that it created in the middle of the woods. But the film never lets on as to why this creature is specifically targeting and trying to get Isaac back there. He just tells him he's special. And that brings me to the issues that I had with this Isaac character. It almost seems like this kid was written to be much younger. He's buying into this idea that his dad isn't dead, but is instead now this strange creature visiting him in the middle of the night, making weird requests to run off into the woods. Now, again, I know grief can do odd things to people, but I just couldn't buy into any of this. And the whole movie, you know, again, it hinges on this premise of the kid believing that this creature is his still living father. It's just a very tough sell and you know, I wasn't buying. Oh, and also, since I brought it up in my intro, I should mention I was totally right about that dog. Poor Bella is another dog used for a cheap plot device. It's funny, movies used to specifically not kill the dog. Now it seems like they go out of their way just to put a dog in a movie so they can kill it. Now, I recently reviewed Crazy House where they use this new dog killing trope in a darkly comic way. But here, it just feels like a cheap way to try to get the audience emotionally invested. It just seemed like a lazy shortcut to further the grief in this movie. Again, I just was not digging it. So I have no idea what the antagonist creature's motivations are. I don't believe the child's motivations are very believable. Julie is an intensely unlikable protagonist. And then there's the way this one ends. Talk about unsatisfying. I think the intent here was maybe to leave the audience with some unanswered questions that would keep us thinking about Daddy's head after its runtime concluded. But much like the rest of the film, this ending didn't work for me. Now, I'm not asking lots of questions after this one because it didn't give me enough to ask questions about, and I'm just sort of glad it's over. But anyway, I think I've done enough rambling and complaining about my unsatisfying experience with this movie. The real question is, how do I rate Daddy's head? Well, I think it's worth a casual watch. If you're looking for a movie to throw on in the background while you're doing something else, this might not be a bad choice. It's easy enough to follow what's there, and there are some cool looking scenes that might draw your attention, but overall, you're not gonna miss much with a half-hearted watch of this movie. Now, if you're a huge fan of the movie The Babadook, you might wanna give this one a more serious watch. I do think it's got some similar themes and vibes going on, but Overall, Daddy's Head is a movie that's just not nearly as well executed as The Babadook. And I gotta ask, what do you think, fellow Shudder subscribers? Did Daddy's Head work for you or was this one a miss? I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Please let me know in the comments below. And if you dug the review, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons too. It helps me out a ton. And as I've been saying, this October, it's just stacked with new horror movies hitting streaming services. I'm trying to check out as many of those as I can while still making my way through the backlog of my watch list. Now, even though I didn't love this movie, I have been having a great time getting all these reviews out, and I don't think you're gonna wanna miss out on all the fun. So until next time, don't forget to keep it rad.